गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन टूडे विल बी डिस्कसिंग अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक वन विच इज यूजफुल टू अस इन डे टू डे क्लिनिकल प्रैक्टिस दैट इज द कोरोनरी गाइड वायर्स द टाइप्स द यूजेज एंड द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ गाइड वायर्स सो द पर्पज ऑफ द गाइड वायर इज बेसिकली टू क्रॉस द लीजन टू क्रॉस इट एटोमेटिकली एंड टू प्रोवाइड सपोर्ट फॉर द पैसेज ऑफ बलून इंस्टेंट सो दैट वी कैन डू अ परक्यूटेनियस एंड जो प्लास्टी राइट सो वील बी डीलिंग विद कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ गाइड वायर्स प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ गाइड वायर्स एंड द टाइप्स ऑफ गाइड वायर्स सो द कंपोनेंट्स ऑफ द गाइड वायर्स बेसिकली देर इज अ सेंट्रल कोर which may be made up of either retinol or it may be made up of stainless steel we will be discussing the advantages and disadvantages of each of these cores but basically there is a central core and then there is a distal tip this distal tip may either be made up of stainless steel or platinum or tungsten and then there is a coating on the central core the coating is either a silicon coating or a ptfe coating or it may be a hydrophilic coating and depending upon the type of the coating that is used we have different types of guide wires and their uses and advantages and disadvantages so this is the cross section of a guide wire again showing the same thing there is a central core there is a coating and then there is a distal tip right the central core is the basic component of the guide wire and that is what is going to contribute to the tactile feedback the torqueability the trackability and the pushability the support which the guide wire offers is basically dependent on the central core and the thickness of the central core when the core extends to the tip of the guide wire we call it as a unibody guide wire <coughs> now depending upon the core if you have a smaller diameter core it is obviously going to be a more flexible guide wire and if you have a larger diameter core then obviously the tracking and the support that it provides is going to be higher the taper is basically when the diameter of the guide wire reduces and um, grinds is basically the part where the diameter remains the same and it is the part in between the tapers now if you have a longer taper it is going to provide a, a better tracking and it's going to provide us less support so if you have a longer taper the support that the guide wire offers is going to be less but it facilitates the tracking of the guide wire and a shorter taper is going to provide us a greater support now let us discuss the core material of the guide wire so it can either be stainless steel or nitinol as i mentioned stainless steel is stronger it is more flexible and it provides better torqueability and a greater tactile feedback whereas nitinol is uh, much more elastic but it provides uh, less torqueability and less tactile feedback and that is why most of our guide wires are usually having a core material made up of stainless steel now let us skip this slide so the cover on the tip it either may be a polymer coating or it may be a plastic coating right the cover on the core is basically going to provide us the lubricity so that we can easily track through the vessel and track through torqueous lesions so it either may be a polymer cover or it may be a polymer cover with tip coils now um, anybody who has seen an angioplasty knows that the distal tip of the guide wire always has a radio opaque marking so most of our workhorse wires will have a 30 mm of radio opaque marking and that is what is going to provide us the visibility so radio opaque portion is what is visible easily and it can guide us where the wire actually is some wires like uh, the fielder xt series will have a much longer radio opaque tip and it usually um, uh, exceeds 15 cm but most of our routine workhorse guide wires will have a radio opaque portion of 30 mm now the coatings on the guide wire basically it's outer covering on the core that keeps the diameter consistent and improves the performance of the wire it improves the trackability and they improves the um, crossing ability of the wire the purpose of the coating is basically to reduce the friction by facilitating the movement of the wire within the coronaries and across the lesion it improves the deliverability of interventional devices and the type and the length of the coating varies most often the coating is usually applied to the distal 30 cm of the wire or the 300 mm of wire so it can either be a hydrophilic coating or it may be a hydrophobic coating hydrophilic coating basically hydrophilic means it attracts water it is applied over the polymer and the core of the wire including the tip of the wire so it basically reduces the friction and improves the trackability of the guide wire whereas the hydrophobic coating is basically something that repels water and it is usually a silicon coating so silicon coating is a hydrophobic coating and it is applied on the part of the wire excluding the tip and uh, it does not need to be the wire does not need to be um, flushed with saline and it increases the friction it improves the stability of the wire right uh, some of our wires are hydrophobic wires but a uh, large majority of us wires that we use are hydrophilic wires the advantage of using a hydrophilic wire is that uh, the crossing ability is much better the only problem is that it can dissect the vessels and it can perforate the distal vessels so 
the advantage at the cost of a good maneuverability the disadvantage is easier risk of um, much higher risk of dissection much higher risk of small branch perforation the hydrophobic wires have a much better tactile feedback they are controllable they are less likely to dissect less likely to perforate the problem with hydrophobic wires is that their crossing ability and trackability is poor so uh, as we go from a non coated wire to a hydrophobic coating to a hydrophilic coating and then to a polymer coated wire with polymer cover with hydrophilic coating the lubricity of the wire increases but the tactile feedback reduces so tactile feedback is highest with a non coated or a hydrophobic coated wire and lubricity is highest with a polymer jacket wire so ideal guide wire should have a good push transmission so your uh, whatever you push should be transmitted to the, to the distal tip of the wire it should have a good torque transmission should have a 1 is to 1 torque transmission which is probably best with uh, a sion wire the trackability is basically the ability to deliver interventional devices it should be flexible its tip should be elastic and should have a memory retention at the distal tip do, during the entire procedure the tip should be visible depending on the radio pick uh, tip uh, the durability of the wire basically should be kink resistant especially when you use interventional devices over the wires and it should provide a good tactile feedback the prolapse tendency is basically the tendency of a guide wire to knuckle once it is passed into a vessel it is very common with uh, floppy wires like uh, run through wire or a bmw wire and it's problematic when you want to cross a very critical lesion like say a 95 or 99% stenosis but once you've crossed the lesion if the wire has a prolapse tendency then it is better because you are going to avoid the risk of perforations so depending upon the construction material you can have a central core the uh, wires can be divided depending upon the central core depending upon the type of the lesion that you are going to use either a workhorse wire or a cto wire depending on the cover whether it is a spring coil or a polymer coated wire whether it is a hydrophobic uh, coating or a hydrophilic coating depending on whether it's a tapered wire or a non tapered wire whether it's a flexible wire and what are the types of support that the wire offers right so basic classification is a uh, floppy wire balanced wire and extra support wire tip load is basically the force that it requires to buckle the distal 1 cm of the wire and as the tip load increases the wire is going to become stiffer your low, least stiff wires are basically the bmw wires and the highest stiffest wires are the miracle twin wires and the confianza wires right so as the <clears throat> tip load increases your support is going to increase but that comes at the added risk of perforation of the distal vessel floppy wires are less than 0.5 g of tip load balanced wires are between 0.5 to 1 g of tip load and anything more than 1 g of tip load we say that these are extra support wires and some of these are also CTO wires. So basically, it's the amount of force that we need to buckle the distal one centimeter of the wire. Low tip load wire reduces the friction, reduces the chances of vascular injury, and improves the durability of the wire. But the only problem is that it may offer less support, and it may not be able to cross very critical lesions as well as CTO lesions. Most of our routine workhorse wires are balanced guide wires, uh, ranging uh, tip load ranging between 0.5 to 0.9 gram. It offers an excellent balance between the support it provides and the safety that the wire has right so it has an excellent uh, balance between flexibility support and steerability most of our lesions are crossed with the use of workhorse wires uh, this is a list of workhorse wires lots of wires galio run through cougar asai standard bmw zinger asai light asai pro water flex but what is most frequently used uh, throughout our country is the run through wire BMW wire and sometimes and in some centers the Sion blue wire also constitutes the workhorse guide wires. Extra support wires are those where uh, you have a very difficult lesion, you have a very tortuous lesion, calcified lesion. Uh, your wire does not support the passage of balloons or stents, and in those cases, we you need wires where the tip load is high. Uh, extra support guide wires are also a lot of guide wires. You have uh, balanced extra support wire. We have choice PT extra support. We have stabilizer plus. We have the whisper extra support wire. So these are extra support guide wires you need in very tortuous lesions and calcified lesions. Then there are certain wires like the Grand Slam wire and the Iron Man wire, right? These are super extra support guide wires. They are used when your extra support wires also do not work. They have a high tip load, and they are usually used as buddy wires in uh, extremely tortuous and calcified vessels. Floppy wires are useful for. Uh, uh, negotiating a tortuous anatomy uh, but usually lacks support for device tracking once a lesion is crossed you can exchange these wires with a microcatheter with a super extra support wire or an extra support wire right so for to cross a lesion you can use certain floppy wires but if uh, do, do not offer enough support for 
um, interventional devices like balloons and stents, then you may exchange them with a super extra support wire. Floppy guide wires, um, again pilot wire, whisper wire, these are very floppy guide wires, very low tip load. Uh, again, but these are polymer coated wires and they have a small risk of perforation. Based on the support the wires offer, they are again divided into light, moderate and extra support. The light ones are the high torque balance wire, moderate is your usual BMW wire and extra support wire are usually the whisper extra support wire and the choice extra support wire. Support basically depends on the core strength, the stronger the core you usually get a better support. Super extra support wires, uh, there are plenty but what we commonly use are the Iron Man wire and the Grand Slam wire. These are uh, very high support wires and offer the most possible uh, support for passage of balloons and stents. So again, these are uh, heavy body, provide the best support. They have a tip load of around one gram. They are hydrophobic for better support. Usually used as buddy wire in tortuous PCI. And these are 014 wires and they are also used in infrapopletal disease, right? For passage of balloons and stents. Based on coating, we have hydrophilic and hydrophobic wires, right? We'll be discussing these. Uh, then we have non-polymer coated wires and then we have a polymer coated wires. So non-polymer wires, usually hydrophilic wires or, a, uh, or hybrid hydrophilic and hydrophobic wires. So non-polymer wires are basically workhorse wires and CTO wires, right? The workhorse wires with a low, bur uh, with a low tip load are BMW wire, run through floppy wire and Sion blue wire. These are a workhorse wires. These are non-polymer coated wires, right? And certain uh, heavier weight, uh, much higher tip load CTO wires like Gaia 1st, Gaia 2nd, Gaia 3rd, Miracle, Confianza Pro, Hornet 14. These are also non-polymer wires, right? But most of these are either hydrophilic wires or a mix hydrophilic and hydrophobic wires. So your BMW run through Sion Blue, Gaia 1st, 2nd, 3rd, Miracle, Confianza, Hornet, all of these are non-polymer wires. Polymer wires basically include three series of wires. One is your Pilot 50, Pilot 150. Uh, next is your filter series of wires including filter plane, filter FC, filter XT, filter XTR and filter XTA and uh, your whisper group of wires. So amongst these the low tip weight wires are whisper, uh, regular whisper and pilot 50 and Sion black and filter FC. Uh, intermediate tip load wires are filter XT and heavy tip load CTO wires are pilot 200 and uh, gladius mongo. So based on clinical scenario. Um, we have workhorse wires, extra support wires and specialty CTO wires. Workhorse wires, the desirable characteristics are these should be safe, one is to one torque transmission should be present and these should be durable wires. Extra support wires are used for tortuous anatomies like a grand whisper extra support wire or grand slam or iron man wires and specialty wires are usually used for um, CTOs. Guide wire selection is influenced by the type of the vessel, the nature of the lesion, the location of the lesion, the morphology of the lesion and the types and the number of stents that you are going to place. So selection of guide wires from simple to challenging, from uh, simple lesions to tortuous lesions. We start with workhorse wires, usually the BMW wire or you can use a run through NS or you can use a Sion blue wire. Uh, then we have frontline finesse wires like uh, the whisper wire or the pilot wire. Then we have extra support wires like Iron Man wire or the Grand Slam wire and specialty wires like uh, Crosset, Miracle, Confianza Pro, Hornet, Pilot 200. These are used mostly for CTOs. So let us uh, discuss some of the commonly and frequently used wires. Uh, the One of the most commonly used wires is the BMW wire, very low tip load, 0.6 gram. It's a, it states it's a balanced middleweight torque. It's a balanced type of wire, a tip load of 0.6 gram, radio opaque uh, length of 30 millimeters. Uh, again, a 014 wire. Uh, has a hydrophilic coating, a non-polymer and uh, basically it is a nitinol coated, nitinol core wire. The run through has a dual core, the main shaft of uh, stainless steel and the distal core made up of nitinol and tip is basically a, nit a nitinol shaping ribbon, right? So Sion Blue again one of the workhorse wires, tip load of just 0.5 gram, diameter again 014, uh, spring coil length is 20 centimeters. Again comes in mostly 180 centimeter which we commonly use. It's either a straight or a J tip wire and uh, has a, a radio opaque length of 30 millimeter. Again, one of the standard uh, workhorse wires. Then we have the whisper wire, a slightly higher tip load of 0.8 and 1.2, 1 and 1.2 grams. 
uh, oven 4 radio peg length of 30 mm and guide wire length again standard 190 cm tip of whisper guide wire is usually straight and also comes in a j shaped guide wire uh, grand slam wire uh, uh, very extra support wire tip load is 0.7 gram it has a ptfe coating uh, stiff wire shaft provides extra support for delivery of balloons and stents. It is used for extremely tortuous lesions and uh, again has a short radio opaque tip uh, around 40 millimeters. Then uh, coming to another very frequently used wire, the filter FC wire has a polymer coat. It's a, basically a polymer coated wire. Tip load is low 0.8 gram. Again, three centimeter of radio opaque tip and uh, it gives fine control in challenging tortuous anatomies and highly stenosis lesions right polymer sleeve provides adequate provides advanced slip performance with superior torque and support it's 014 and the length is 180 cm comes in either a st straight um, tip and a j tip wire so when we discuss the filter series we have the filter xt wire filter xt wire is extremely useful especially for ctos for long diffusely disease lesions so it has a polymer sleeve has excellent lubricity and trackability the tapered tip provides extreme precision for the treatment of complex lesions such as subtotal occlusions, CTOs and diffuse lesions. The important thing to note over here is that it has a very long radio opaque tip 16 centimeters and a polymer sleeve length also of 16 millimeter, 16, sorry, 16 centimeters. Diameter is 014, spring coil length is 11 centimeter and guide wire length is 190 centimeters. It comes in a straight tip and needs to be given a primary or a secondary curve when you are doing a CTO. So filter XT is uh, uh, considered one of the first wires to be used in patients who have micro channels when you are doing a CTO. So an extremely useful wire also comes in filter XTA which has a tapered tip also comes as filter XTR. The important thing over here is it has a long radio opaque tip and, and once you have crossed the lesion you have dilated the lesion you need to uh, maybe exchange this wire with a routine work routine workhorse wire because it has a long radio opaque tip and adequate visualization of the vessel is not possible when you are injecting dye when you want to place stents. So it needs to be replaced with a routine wire. And we have the Miracle 12 wire, one of the highest workload wires, a uh, tip load of 12 gram, indicated for very complex CTOs which have very uh, you know hard caps. Comes in tip loads of 3, 6 and 12, Miracle 3, Miracle 6 and Miracle 12. Again O14 guide wire. Total length 180 centimeters, tip load of 12 grams, and a long radio opaque tip of 11 centimeters. Then we have the Confianza Pro. It has a similar structure in uh, tip stiffness to Conquest with slip coat coating for lubricity. The distal tip is not coated to allow it to catch on the entry point of the lesion. So again, very useful for CTOs. Uh, it has a radio opaque portion of uh, 20 centimeters, a tip load of 9 gram, and the guide wire length is 180 centimeter, comes as a straight tip guide wire. So Confianza Pro again a non-polymer coated wire very useful when you are doing CTOs. Then we have the Crossit series of wires uh, which I have not discussed till now. Crossit series comes as Crossit 100, 200 and Crossit 400. Tip load of uh, 1.7, 4.7 and 8.7 gram respectively. So Crossit 400 has a very high tip load 8.7 grams, O14 guide wire. Good thing about Crossit series is that it is a very short radio opaque tip of around 30 millimeter. Length comes in 190 centimeters and it's again a straight or a J tip guide wire. Now, since most of our lesions are going to be crossed with routine wires like the Sion wire or the filter FC wire or BMW or a run through wire, I'd say, I'd say 75 to 80 percent of the cases can be done with these wires, but the remaining cases like CTOs, very complex lesions, dissections need to be addressed with the use of specialty wires. These specialty wires are the CTO wires. Now what we need when you are doing a CTO, you need good wires. Most important is crossing of the wire. If you have crossed the wire, you've done almost 50% of your job when you are doing a CTO. So you need a high penetration force of the guide wire. You need a pushable wire. You also need a wire which is steerable for easy manipulation in different directions once either you are sub or you are somewhere into the lesion, right? So CTO wires are basically divided into a non-coated hydrophobic wires or these are hydrophilic wires. So the hydrophobic wires are basically the Crossit wires in the Miracle series, Miracle 3, 6 and Miracle 12. And we have the Crossit 100, 200 and 400 wires. The hydrophilic wires can either be non-tapered like the Pilot series or it can be tapered like the Conquest or the Confianza Pro. So studies on uh, CTOs have shown that micro channels are present in approximately 30 to 50% of all patients who have CTOs. 
so when we do an angiogram some of the times we may not be able to visualize these micro channels we may not be able to see uh, that micro channels are present but on histological analysis of ctos we have seen that uh, micro channels are present in many of the cases of ctos so although one may be tempted to start with a very uh, high penetration wire like the gaia series or the crosset series it is always uh, said that you should at least once give a chance to your polymer coated wires right so uh, if micro channels are easily visible then you always want to start with your filter series of wires right so filter series basically is the filter fc filter xt filter xtr or you want to start with the pilot series of wires uh, if you do not see that uh, there are any micro channels present or if you see it's a very fibrocalcific lesion which may need a much higher penetration force and may need a much higher tip load then you can start with your uh, hard wires like miracle 3 6 miracle 12 you can start with cross it 100 200 400 or you can go for the gaia wires right so cto basically uh, there are three strategies for anti-grade wire there are basically four cto strategies two of them are retrograde two of them are anti-grade amongst the anti-grade ones we basically have anti-grade wire escalation and then we have anti-grade dissection and re-entry anti-grade dissection and re-entry is outside the scope of this uh, presentation so we'll mostly be dealing with anti-grade wire escalation which is the strategy used in almost 70 percent of the cases right so then when you are doing an anti-grade dissection uh, when you are doing an anti-grade wire escalation you got three strategies you can either drill you can either penetrate or you can slide right uh, so drilling you basically need a short primary cow you may need a small secondary cow and we basically start with a moderate stiffness guide wire and then you gently escalate on the wires you can go from miracle 3 to miracle 12 or from gaia 1 to gaia 3 <laughs> penetration is also known as control drilling uh, we want to apply minimum rotation we want to uh, slowly drill into the lesion and uh, you can again slowly escalate the wire uh, depending upon the type of the lesion sliding is basically we need a longer and shallower tip shapes uh, we need simultaneous uh, rotation and probing of the lesion and uh, we have almost no tactile response drilling and penetration depends on your tactile response sliding uh, will have basically no tactile response and for sliding we need lesions which have, we need wires which have a polymer coating like the pilot series of wires or the whisper series of wires <laughs> so in the drilling strategy you start with an intermediate guide wire if you are not able to cross you go for a standard stiffer guide wire like the miracle 312 right and finally you go for a stiff tapered guide wire in the penetration strategy also um, you basically want to go for the same strategy you start with an intermediate guide wire and then go with go forward with a stiff tapered guide wire right so uh, then we have the polymer coated wires uh, basically hydrophilic wires we've already discussed these wires these are basically the whisper series of wires uh, the whisper series uh, whisper uh, whisper medium support and whisper extra support we have pilot 50 pilot 150 and pilot 200 then we have choice pt uh, these are commonly used wires right so whisper uh, choice pt and uh, uh, for very experienced ct operators we have the confianza pro wire with a very high tip load of 9 and 12 grams so non coated uh, wires basically we already discussed some of these Right, uh, basically discussed some of these. The we have the miracle wire, we have the cross it 100, 200, and 400 wires. These are basically non-coated guide wires. So CTO integrate wire escalation uh, always start with a wire like a filter XT, filter XTA, or filter XTR, basically which have a polymer coating and may be able to find some micro channels. Then you go forward with hard wires like a Gaia second, Gaia third, and then finally go to pilot 200, pilot 400. None of these if working then you go with a Confianza Pro or a Gaia 3rd or a Miracle 12. Right, so let's uh, see some of these wires. Uh, we have the pilot wire it comes at pilot 50, pilot 150, pilot 200 with increasing tip loads. Uh, basically a polymer tip hydrophilic wire. Then we have the SI group of wires from Abbott Vascular. Uh, basically we have the Miracle 3, Miracle uh, 6 and the miracle 12 with tip loads of 3.9 gram 8.8 gram and 13 grams respectively these are hydrophobic wires uh, radio opaque length is high 110 millimeter or 11 centimeter and basically it has a no polymer coating then uh, one of the most useful groups of wires are the filter xt filter fc and filter wires 
Although filter and filter FC are not very useful when you are doing a CTO, filter XT is an extremely useful wire. The difference between these wires is that the tip load for filter XT is low, 1.2 grams, but the radio opaque portion is long, 16 centimeters. All of them are O14. All of them are hydrophilic wires, basically have a full polymer coating. Then uh, cross it. We've already discussed the cross-it wire. It has a short radio opaque length, O14 wire. It's a hydrophilic wire and core material is made up of stainless steel. There is no polymer coating, right? Uh, again comes as uh, cross-it 100, 200, 300 and 400 with increasing tip loads from 1.7 gram to 8.7 gram. Uh, persuader guide wire, uh, not very sure if it's being frequently used. Uh, it comes from Metronic as persuader 3, 6 and 9, right? So again, CTO wires are uh, one of the highest tip load wires. Uh, Confiance and Confiance are pro, mostly for uh, chronic total occlusions. Basically, have a hydrophobic coating. Tip load for Confiance is uh, 9 gram, and tip load for Confiance pro is uh, 12 grams. The radio opaque portion is 20 centimeters. Uh, Gaia series of wires again very useful wires, especially when you have hard calcified lesions. Good choice for high when you need high penetration while maintaining torqueability. Uh, these are again hydrophilic wires, does not have a coated distal tip and uh, uh, tip load ranges from 1.7 to 4.5 grams. Very useful wires when you want to do hard calcified lesions. Uh, so we have different groups of wires. So front line you're basically going to use a C on wire, you use a filter FC or filter XT. Uh, when you have a tortuous anatomy you want to use wires like a filter XT. For extra support you, you can use a grand slam wire. If it's a subtotal occlusion, again, Sion and Filter FC are extremely useful. And uh, if you have a chronic total occlusion, then wires from Asai series like uh, Miracle 3, 6, 12 are extremely useful. Also, filter groups of wires are very useful. So for tortuous vessels, uh, what we frequently use is the Whisper wire and the Sion blue wire. BMW wire, although mentioned in my personal experience, does not work very well when you have very tortuous lesions and we usually want to go with either a Whisper MS or a Whisper extra support wire or we go with a Sion blue wire. If we have critical stenosis, more than 90%, especially if it is calcified, then a polymer coated wire like a Pilot 50 or a Whisper or a Sion black is extremely useful. If we have a thrombotic lesion, then um, your routine wires like the Whisper or the BMW will work fine. If BMW doesn't work, you can always switch to either a Whisper or you can go for a Pilot 50. In left main, uh, I don't think wire selection matters significantly. Uh, it usually includes a spring to tip guide wire designed for frontline lesions. Most of the times we do LMCA PCI with the use of a BMW wire. For osteal lesions like left main osteum or RC osteum, some prefer the use of an extra support guide wire but uh, we've done well with the use of our routine wires, right? For bifurcations, it is important because uh, uh, although front line you start a bifurcation with routine wires, sometimes after a placement of a stent, when there's significant pinching of a side branch, you may not be able to cross with your routine wires like BMW, you may need a wire like a Whisper or a Pilot. But the important thing is that you always need to take care of the distal vessel, the side branch, because Whisper and Pilot have a risk of distal perforation. Also, do not jail your uh, polymer coated wires because uh, uh, they have a significant risk of breaking of the wire after they've been jailed when you want to pull the wire out of the side branch. Uh, peripheral vascular is not a uh, part of this lecture, so I'll uh, just mention it in brief. For peripheral vascular, you are going to use your O35 guide wires, uh, your standard routine wires, or you can use a uh, glide wire, or you also have uh, uh, extra shift glide wires, right? Uh, so this is not a scope of this discussion. So I'll mostly conclude uh, my lecture with a brief summary. For, for straightforward anatomy, use a routine workhorse wire. Uh, my personal preference is either a BMW run through or a Sion black wire. If it doesn't work, you can always switch to a Whisper or a Pilot 50. If you need uh, backup support, you can either use a buddy wire or you can use an extra support wire like the Whisper extra support wire, which I personally uh, like a lot. If you have calcified lesions, you can upfront start with a hydrophilic polymer coated wire for reduced friction like Whisper MS or Pilot 50. For subtotal occlusion or CTO, uh, with a micro channel, we want to start with a filter XT. And uh, if there's no micro channel, you can always go ahead with a uh, upfront with a CTO, de a dedicated CTO wire like the Gaia series or the Miracle series or the Crossit series. 
if not sure start with a simpler wire you can always escalate your wire and when you are doing a ct always use a micro catheter because it is going to go provide you an excellent backup to cross the lesion also for exchanging of the guide wires right thank you